Hi everyone and welcome to part two of this video. Uh, if you missed part one, you can find it here or below in the description or wherever else YouTube is putting those links these days. Go watch it. It kind of explains how we got here. Just wanted to cut the video because it was getting long. Anyways, enough about me. Let's get going with the rest of this video. Lovely. Let's move on to another one. Okay, Let the next one. I want to do is restaurant. There we go. I want to do restaurant right here. Now, by now you probably figured out that there's going to be a twist to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what we learned from police stations and start with Appendix A first. So let me bring up Appendix A. We're not going to look at it here under the document camera because it's not super clear. Instead, we're going to look at it right here. Okay, This way it might be easier to view. But we're going to start from the very beginning and we're going to look for restaurant under all occupancies. You start from A1, you go all the way to F3. You don't stop until you meet those ends. Okay, From the start to the end. Let's we'll start with A1. Anything for restaurants there? Nope, not that I could find. Okay, how about A2? Anything about restaurants there? Oh, yes, right here. Okay, there, restaurants. Possible restaurant is A2. So that's, uh, I'm gonna make a note of it. The possibility for restaurants is A2. Okay. And let's keep going. Let's go to A3. Anything under A3 for restaurants? No, I don't see it. How about A4? Anything under A4 for restaurants? No, I don't see it. How about B1? Anything under B1 for restaurants? I don't see it. Okay, anything under B2 for restaurants? No, I don't see anything there. How about anything under B3 for restaurants? No, I don't see it. How about anything under C for restaurants? No. Nope. Anything under D for restaurants? And again, don't forget, it's in alphabetical order. I don't see it. Anything under E for restaurants? Oh yeah, look at this, right here. Restaurants. Could be a group E. But it says that if it's a group E, then it's for an occupant load not more than 30 persons. So that's less than or equal to 30 persons. Okay. And again, I want to make a point that the reference for this is under Appendix A. Specifically, A 3.1.2.11, right? Because referencing is very important. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, anything under F1 for restaurants? No, I don't see it. Anything under F2 for restaurants? Nope, I don't see it. Anything under F3 for restaurants? No, I don't see it. So it looks like we either have A2 or E to pick from. And the, the choice between the two comes up to, I guess, the occupant load, right? How many people are in that restaurant? I know, I know. Here's another example that was a tricky one, purposely picked to show, make a point, okay? Had we just used table 3.1.2.1, maybe we would have found one of these occupancies, but not likely both. So instead, by going through Appendix A first, we we're able to look at all the possibilities from A1 to F3, and then be able to make an informed decision. So in our case, the difference between the two is the occupant load. Just like in the police station example a few moments ago, you either should have been told how many people would be using this space, so what the occupant load was, or if it wasn't given to you, you could make an assumption, or if it wasn't given to you, you could ask a question, or if it were real life, you'd reach out to either your supervisor or you would reach out to your client to get more information because that's how it works, right? Asking questions is not bad. 
You don't look silly. You look silly only if you make assumptions that then prove to be incorrect when you could have asked a question. Lovely. You're awesome. Let's do another example, okay? So in this case, again, it could have been either this, A2, or it could have been E, and that's depending on the occupant load. Okay? So let's do another example, and I promise you we're not going to do any more tricky examples. Let's do, uh, let's do motel, okay? So let's figure out motel. And we're going to use what we've learned so far. We're going to use Appendix A. Let me make this a bit bigger. Okay. We're going to use Appendix A as our starting point. Again, this is under A 3.1.2.1.1. So I'm going to bring that up on the screen for us so we can view it properly. And we're going to go here, go to the very beginning and see if we can find Motel. Again, start from A1, read all the way to F3. No cheating or skipping. Do all of that. And then let's see what we find. We'll start for A1. Oh, and I guess we don't need this scribbling here. I can remove that. Okay, let's start with a1. Anything under A1 for motel? Nope. How about A2? Anything under A2 for motel? No, I can't see it. Anything under A3 for motel? No. Anything under A4? I can't find it. B1? No. Then let's move on to B2. Anything under B2 for motels? Actually, let me remove this squiggle here. There. That. And this. Okay. Anything under B2 for motels? No, I don't see it. Anything under B3 for motels? No. Anything under C for motels? Oh, oh, oh. here. Found something here for motels, okay? Yeah, looks like C is a possibility. So I'm going to make a note of that in uh, here on my tablet. I'm just going to make a note that C seems to be a possibility. So maybe I'll do it in a slightly different color. There we go. Okay. C is a possibility. So let's continue. Anything under D for motels? Nope, I can't find it. Anything under E for motels? Can't see it. Anything under F1 for motels? Nope, can't see it. Anything under F2 for motels? Nah. Anything under F3 for motels? No. So it looks like the only choice we have is C for motels. And if we want to be reminded what C is, I'm just going to bring up table 3.1.2.1, right? And here it tells us that C is for residential occupancies. So that's a note that I'm going to make right here, right now. C, because it's just I me mean, being thorough. This is for residential occupancies. Okay. And then I'm just going to be super thorough and I'm going to use for my reference like this. Like that. And then I'm also going to add this table. Like that. Okay. Lovely. I'm hoping this is making sense. Let's do another example. Let's do library. Okay. Let's try doing library like that. Can you guess what library could be? You might have an idea, or maybe you don't. But what we're going to do is we're going to use what we've learned so far and start with Appendix A. So for Appendix A, we're going to start under A3.1. Point two, point one, one. So that's what I'm going to bring up on the screen right now. Just make it super large for you like this. And I'm going to remove some of the squibbles that I've placed here. And I'm going to start from the very beginning, right? No, no cheating, no skipping from A1 to F3. Let's see if we can find a library. Okay, let's start with A1. Where is A1? Right here. Library? Nothing. How about A2? Anything for library here? Oh, yes. Here and here, huh? Libraries. 
Okay, are we done? No, remember, no cheating. You have to do the whole thing all the way to F3. So let's see, A3, anything for libraries there? No. A4? No. How about B1? No. Oh, but before I move on, I guess I want to make a point that reminded myself that library could be an A2 occupancy. Okay, just like this. So one possibility is an A2 occupancy. Okay, so after B1, let's move on to B2. Anything under B2 for libraries? No. Anything under B3 for libraries? No. Anything under C for libraries? No. Anything under D for libraries? No. Anything under E for libraries? No. Anything under F1 for libraries? No. F2? No. F3? No. So in this case, the only choice that we have is, there we go, A2. So it looks like this is going to be A2. And if we want to be thorough, we can also illustrate what the table 3.1.2.1 refers to as uh, A2. I think A2 was the other occupancies. Yes, A2 is assembly occupancies, not elsewhere, classified in group A. So that's what I'm going to call them. I'm going to call these the other A occupancies. Okay. And then I'm going to be super thorough for reference. I'm going to point to A 3.1.2.11 plus table 3.1.2.1. Point one. And again, don't forget, we always start with the appendix. Lovely. Thank you for sticking around. Maybe we can do one more. Let's do parking garages. Let's do this as our last one. We're going to do parking garages as our last one. And we're going to use what we've learned and we're going to start first with appendix A. All right? And where we're starting is under appendix A. 3.1.2.11, right here. So I'm just going to make this larger on screen for you, like this, and I'm going to make Appendix A appear, right here. I'm going to remove any excessive squiggles that can be deleted, like that, and go back to the beginning. We're looking for parking garages. Oh. Why don't we remove this squiggle here? There. So parking garages. We're looking for parking garages. We start from A1 to F3. No cheating. Everything. So let's do it. Parking garages. Anything under A1? No. A2? No. A3? No. A4? No. A5? <laughs> there is no A5. How about B1? No. B2? No. B3? No. C? No parking garages. How about D? No. Don't see. How about E? Parking garages? No. Nope. Again, by parking garages, uh, what is intended is a place you drive your vehicle to, to leave it. That's it. Okay. So it's a place you go and park your vehicle. F1, anything there? Nope. F2, parking garages. Uh, maybe storage rooms, warehouses, maybe? Not a parking garage. Uh, oh, 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 F3. Look at this. Ah, I'm so bad with the mouse. F3. Storage garages, including open air parking garages. So that's exactly what we're looking for. A place where you take, you drive your vehicle to, your vehicle gets put into storage. Because that's what parking is. You're storing your vehicle. 
So it looks like that what we're getting from this is that F3 is a good candidate. And if you remember, F3 is low hazard industrial. Whoa, how did I come up with that? Well, I've done this enough that I remember it, but I'm also going to show you exactly how I got that. How do I know that F3 is low hazard industrial? And that's because I went and found it in table 3.1.2.1 division B part three of the Ontario building code volume one right here, low hazard industrial occupancy. Okay, that's great. Let's wrap this up. Here we are. So this is our occupancy. So you can even write a therefore, and then we're gonna put a reference just to indicate where this came from, just to be super thorough. A 3.1.2.11. And then I'm also gonna add this because this is where I got the name of the occupancy from. Okay, lovely. So again, I wanna thank you so much for your time. Let me summarize again what all of this is about. This is all about figuring out the major occupancy of a building in a way that I consider the better way. And it is by using Appendix A first. I appreciate you choose to spend your time with me doing this. Have a lovely day. If you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to leave them, I guess, below here. Or if you're one of my students, you know how to email me and to ask me questions, especially if you want to do it live, you're welcome to do that too during class time. Take care, stay well, and see you soon. Bye.